Good morning, this is Nash Gonzalez with Planning and Building Services, and I wanted to go ahead and talk a little bit about the debris removal program in general. What this involves is the removal of all debris, burned debris from the affected burn sites. I also have Kirk Ford here with Environmental Health who will talk about um, some of the household hazardous waste, but um, in more detail, but what I want to mention is that the initial sweeps will be conducted by the Department of Toxic Substance Control who will look for and remove any household hazardous waste. That also would then lead us to the next phase, which would be having the Army Corps of Engineers come in and actually remove burn debris from burn sites. Uh, they will be working with contractors, they'll be working with local contractors to try to remove this uh, debris as soon as possible. Um, Kirk, anything you want to add? Yeah, I'm Kirk Ford with Environmental Health. Uh, so phase one of this process is where uh, DTSC with their local contractor, PARC, P-A-R-C, they're going to go out in a couple of teams and they're going to survey all the sites for household hazardous waste, uh, batteries, fuel drums, uh, paints, things like that that are, we, that are known hazards that are have somehow made it their way into the, the burn debris, whether they're in the outbuilding, whether they're in the structure themselves. And they're gonna try and isolate those or mark those and pull those out. If it's a small propane tank, they're gonna either check if it's safe, does it still have propane in it? If it does, they're gonna, they're gonna move those out. And that's really, in essence, to, to, to make the area safe so that the, the, the phase two can come in and start the debris removal process without encountering any dangerous objects. Um, this first phase one with DTSC, uh, you're going to see DTSC out there. You're going to see guys in Tyvek suits. That's the, the, the park um, cleanup crew doing that remediation. They're going to have their masks on and they're going to be sifting through, grabbing all kinds of stuff. You're going to see a county worker that's going to escort them. If you have questions, you can contact them as well and kind of find out where they are, what, what they've done so far. That process is all provided free of charge. Uh, it's through the Household Hazardous Waste Program through DTSC. There's not going to be any billing to the insurance. It's, um, it's just a free benefit that they're, that they're given to you. Uh, that is going to pave the way for phase two, which Nash will talk about. And phase two is the, the approach of having these sites cleared by the Department of Toxic Substance and then having the Army Corps of Engineers and its contractors come in and actually physically remove all of the debris from the property. So when we talk about debris, we're talking about all of the burned debris, uh, including any um, uh, concrete foundations, anything that is deemed to be uh, debris and waste. And so again, most people will note that as you're entering Redwood Valley, you will notice the, a lot of signs up that basically say that you're entering an area that has toxins in the area. Uh, that is true according to uh, what the Department of Toxic Substance tells me and what the Army Corps tells me and what Cal OES has indicated is that based on what has occurred with the fires, a lot of the materials that have burned, including um, concrete foundations, uh, roofing, walls, structures in general, uh, have now been reduced to toxic substances. And the Army Corps will remove all of this, will truck it away, and take it to landfills that have been approved to receive this toxic substance. So please do not disturb the sites, do not remove any of the material. Uh, as we get into talking into about this more in detail, to qualify for this free program, which again the, uh, the state and the federal government are undertaking, you cannot remove any of the debris from the burn site. Disturbing the material from the burn site will disqualify you from this state and federal program. The program is free of charge. Now, uh, with that, um, you know, I, I can't stress enough, we need to let the uh, Army Corps of Engineers and do, uh, do their job. But that also leads me to the discussion of a right of entry form that needs to be filled out. And as Kirk mentioned earlier, the initial sweeps that are being done by the Department of Toxic Substance Control allows for the state and county representatives to come out onto your site to do this. This is done under an emergency public health declaration that allows them to do this. However, for the Army Corps or others to go in and do the cleanup, we are 
asking that you complete a right of entry form. This right of entry form gives the state, the feds, the county permission to come onto your property and remove this material. So what do I need to fill out is a common question as a result of this ROE. There is a form, and this is what the form looks like. And um, it is several pages, and what we ask is that you complete the document. You fill in your name, address, contact information, any pertinent information about the property needs to be placed on there. The other thing that, um, turning to the back page, um, there are property information and special instructions. So if there's something that you want left, if and again, some of the things that Kirk alluded to is if um, there's um, some classic automobiles or there's certain items that you want to be left, then you need to indicate that on the form. The other thing that um, has been asked is about septic systems. And what we're asking is that you as the property owner, you who know the property the best, stake those out so that um, they will try to minimize disruption to those um, uh, uh, pieces of infrastructure on the property. And so there's plenty of room on this document for you to add any instructions that you want to um, provide. This information will be turned into the Department of Planning and Building Services. We will review this to make sure that it is the property owner who is giving consent. And then we will provide these to the Army Corps of Engineers. As the Department of Toxic Substance is completing their sweeps, it is anticipated that the Army Corps of Engineers will move in shortly thereafter and begin the cleanup. And um, uh, basically, another question that's been asked is, what am I agreeing to when you sign this form? Again, you are agreeing to let um, you know, the cleanup personnel come in onto the site and remove the fire debris. Um, and again, as I mentioned, um, where does this get turned in? Again, um, it is turned into the Department of Planning and Building Services. It could either be uh, mailed in, faxed in, brought in in person. Um, we will be, uh, in essence, providing you with two copies of the document, one that you can take with you and one that you will leave with our department. Um, so what happens after you turn this in? Again, we are checking to make sure that um, um, the, the person who's signing this is the, is the right person, is the property owner who is giving us the right of entry. And again, this information will be passed on to the Corps of Engineers. Uh, does it cost anything? No. This is a program that um, will be paid for by the state and the federal government. Uh, questions that come up is, how do I interface with my insurance company? My, uh, uh, how, who do I talk to? Again, most policies are going to differ, but most policies will have what they call a provision or a line item for debris removal. That is the amount that will be turned over to the county and the state. Any amounts in excess of that, the state and the federal government will cover that under the program. So uh, ideally is this program will be paid for by the government, by the uh, federal government and the state uh, government. And so, um, again, a lot of questions have also been asked about septic systems, and I'll go ahead and um, turn it over to Kirk. Yeah, so uh, as Nash was talking about the septic systems, part of this agreement, uh, make sure you read it before you sign it, uh, part of this agreement is that you will mark out your septic system because the contractor doesn't actually want to drive into your septic tank. He doesn't want to uh, destroy your equipment. He just wants to remove the stuff that is debris, remove the structural debris. So we're asking people to mark out their septic systems. If you don't know exactly where it is, if you don't know the exact location of the tank, if you don't know the exact location of the leach lines, give a general area and mark it very clearly so that they can see it. Uh, that could be with paint, it could be with cones, it could be uh, with wooden stakes and caution tape, it could even be with orange fencing. Whatever you want to do to mark out that area so that they don't enter into that and cause damage, you're perfectly fine to do so. Now obviously there is a, a pipe that comes from the tank to the house that is probably melted. That's going to have to be removed somehow and, that, and that's going to be a, an important part of the deb debris removal is taking that off, taking that away. Uh, so that's 
how we want people to mark their septic systems so that they don't have excess damage. Right. Take advantage of this program because if you don't, then the total cost of debris removal will be burdened by the property owner. Uh, oftentimes questions have been raised, well, what if I want to do it myself? First of all, you have to hire a contractor that has been approved to do this type of debris removal. Because again, we're talking about toxin substances that um, cannot be uh, made airborne, cannot be taken to just any landfill. Again, there are no landfills in this county, in Mendocino County, that will accept this burned debris because it is toxin. It will be trucked out of the area to landfills that have been approved to handle this material. So again, I can't stress enough, if you choose to hire your own contractor and you choose to do the debris removal yourself, you are going to take the burden of that cost. And um, if you take advantage of this program, then the cost is borne by the state and federal government. Um, and again, the question uh, is always coming up, if I don't have insurance, who pays for it? Again, the state and federal government will pay for this debris removal. So any questions that you have, please contact Planning and Building Services. We are located at 860 North Bush Street. Our telephone number is area code 707-234-6650.